I do have time for an introduction. Let's go ahead and get into it. <laughs> hey, how y'all doing? My name is Trey. For those of you who don't know me, and I want to welcome you to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, are you interested in true crime? Do you like black guys? Don't you think it'd be swell to hear true crime from a black guy? Well, guess what? You're in luck because I talk about true crime and I just so happen to be black. What a coincidence. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys are liking and subscribing to my channel and liking this video. Comment your thoughts as the video goes on. I love to read them. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys are checking out my TikTok channel, which is listed under the descriptions below. So you can get all the stories that I have. For those of you who've come from you from TikTok, hey! Thank you for following me here. I'm not going to waste up too much of your time because even though this is YouTube and I have all the time in the world, I'm just not that type of person. I'm just not. I still want to just go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to stop yapping my fat lips and we're going to go ahead and get into it. Make sure you guys grab a drink. Today's drink of choice for me is Sweet Walter Blackberry. Let's do it. My first video is from South Africa. It was highly requested, probably the most highly requested video I have ever gotten. Can you guess the name, my South Africans? It's Thabo, Thabo Bester. I believe it's Thabo. It could be Tabo, because I, I know there kind of be a thing with the H, you know, but Thabo Bester. Have you heard of him? In America, have you heard of him? Have you guys, his story is wild. So Tabo Bester, Bobo Bester, his childhood came, seemed to really suck. Well, he lived with his grandma. Now, his grandma had a friend, if we can call him that, but he sucks. Like, Tabo, he was being raped by his grandma's friend. And his grandma, that flab of saggy titties, when he came and told her that he was being raped by her friend, she was just like, whatever. I ain't gonna lie, I felt kind of bad when I saw that, when I heard that. I was like, eh, well, that sucks. I mean, it doesn't excuse anything that he's done in the future, but still, it sucks. It actually got to the point where he had to get, uh, like, medical help for it. Like, that's how bad. Because he was, like, young when this happened. Oh, so that old uh, bag of saggy titties, she finally dies. I love that for her. So when she dies, unfortunately for Thabo, he was put into a, a, like a group home with his friends. And somebody, another man, comes up and was like, hey, I'll take care of you. And unfortunately, he gets raped again. So the dude's like raped two times as a kid. Well, more than two times, but by two different people as a kid. And that goes on for a while. Fast forward. Thabo is now is 22, 23 years old. He becomes what you guys may know him in Africa, what we don't know in America as the Facebook rapist. Thabo actually created a Facebook account. He would pose as like a producer slash a talent agent type dude. And he was luring in women to come to like model. And, you know, they were just trying to be seen. You know, you can't. Can't blame them for that, but they were coming for the through these Facebook messages that he was sending out to these women. He gains the name the Facebook Rapist because when the women were showing up, showing up, he was beating them up, robbing them, and raping them. For somebody who claims to not like to be raped when he was a child, I, I never understood that. You would think I didn't like it. Why would I do it to someone else? Not that though. So Thabo actually started um, raping these women. He would rob them. Um, on August the 26th of 2011, he actually did that to one woman. And according to the timeline of events, he stabbed her in the face. Thank God she didn't die, though. But he lured her up with a Facebook message. We got there, pulled out the old handy-dandy knife, and he jabbed her a couple times. Pretty traumatic for this piece of crap you know it only gets worse from here it truly only gets worse from here 
Earlier that year, January of 2011, he actually meets this beautiful young lady. And I'm so sorry if I butcher the name, but I have been practicing my African tongue, and I think I got a pretty good Numfundu Tahulu. Numfundu Tahulu? Does that sound right? Did I say it right? I think I said it right. I'm going to give myself a drink for that. On January 2011, he meets Numfundu Taolu at a BMW car sales place. She was actually a car saleswoman. Where he sees her, he's checking her out. She's checking them out. It was sparks at first sight. They kind of, you know, gave each other the eye, you know, the eye light. Hold on, I'm going to try to see if I can do it. Ah, I'm sorry. How was that? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't really see what I'm doing right now. But I think that was good. Anyway, he gave her the eye. She gave him the eye. And they hit it off. He buys a BMW Series 1 from Tahulu. And they exchanged numbers. And by March, they were talking every day. But by March, they began some sort of a, an intimate relationship. Sort of like a long distance relationship type deal. At least that's what it was perceived. But you know, niggas. And I say that to say, they had been talking Pretty much the entire year. So around September of that same year, Numfundu contacts Thabo. She lets him know, hey, I got a new job. And I got a couple of days off that I'm going to be free. You know, I, I want to meet up. You know, it's been a long time. We've been talking for several, several months at this point. Let's meet up. So he was like, cool. So at that point in time, he actually got a plane ticket. And he flew her to Durban. And then when they got to, when she got to Durban, they actually both flew to Cape Town. They go to this little bed and breakfast called Ocean Breeze. You know, it was it was a nice little spot. On September the 21st of 2011, Babo and Nimfundu was actually at the bed and breakfast. And they were just, you know, chilling. They had a room together. So, you know, they was probably doing some freaky deaky stuff. But now Nimfundu was under the impression that they were in a relationship. And he was like, no, you know how, 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 how guys can be, you know how trifling that is. Uh, we've been talking the entire year. Yeah. I bought a, I bought you a flight to come visit me. Yeah. I bought us flights to go somewhere else. Yeah. We got a hotel room together, but we not together. That was literally what it was. That was what he said in court. That was what I was said in court. So she thought that she was, you know, the one. And he was telling you, no, you're not the one. So they got into some argument. And in that argument, it came into play of Dabo's ex-girlfriend. It was around 2 o'clock in the morning. He said he got up. He went to the kitchen. He pulled out a knife. Said he only wanted to rob her of her laptop. But he realized that she was awake. And she saw him coming at her with a knife. So they got into a kerfuffle. And this one, he got the knife and he stabbed her in the chest. Blood was pouring everywhere. And he was like, what's the password to the computer? Like, you deserve to be called the hard ER, sir. He's trying to get the password to the computer, but she doesn't answer. And she dies. So he gets a, a ride out. He told the people that was over the bed and breakfast, he was like, hey, she's still in there. Um, don't bother her until after 2 o'clock. That's why he dipped. So they were like, okay. So around 9 p.m. the next day, because they said about 2 o'clock. He said about 2 o'clock. But now 9 p.m., they haven't seen or heard from her. So they go into the bed and breakfast, the room, and she's dead. Yeah, that really sucks. That kind of ended his reign as the Facebook rapist. But he was caught. He went to court for it. He did get life in prison for killing Nimfundu. I guess you could say at this point, justice was kind of served. But that's not the end of the story. The story keeps going on. Yo, this story is so stupid. He starts living another life in prison. In 2018 at the Hilton Hotel, this company, 21st Century Media, was having this big glitzy blowout party like welcome we're here we, we we about to make things happen the people that were showing up were like high society people some of the celebrities that shown up that showed up was a celebrity named amanda dupont and also another one was yvonne chaka chaka so yvonne chaka 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 okay now okay i see you yvonne now, at this big old glancy opening party, the chairs person is this guy. His name is Tom Motsip. 
Motsepi. I think it's Motsepi actually. But Tom Motsepi. He's got money. He's got money. He's the chairs person of 21st Century Media. He's there and also it's on June the 13th which happens to be his birthday. Since he was the chairs person for this company, why not have an opening for his birthday, right? It's a high glam party. You have all these people. You have a service there. I'm actually going to show you this video. So there's a video that's going to be inserted right here. Watch it. It's only about two minutes. So just watch it. I'm a South African TV presenter and entrepreneur, but tonight we're at the Hilton in Santon celebrating the launch of the 21st Century Group. Okay, now didn't that look nice? It did, didn't it? Like that was a lot of good stuff going on in there. Now, one thing I hope that you guys caught. Did you see on the projector there was this guy who was there and he was kind of like laughing. He had a nice suit on, like a designer suit, nice watch. He was, uh, you know, was in there like, ha, ha, ha. Did you see that guy? Did you see him? Guess who it was? Take a while, guess. Take a while, guess who it was. I want you to take a real good guess who that was. Are you guessing? Are you guessing who it was? It was Thabo! <laughs> oh, oh, what well, well, he came to everybody as as Tom Motsip. It was Thabo. So you may be wondering, hey, I thought he had life in prison. I thought he had life in prison because he, he killed that girl. You would be right. So wait, how is he doing that? Yo, he was in jail. The man was recording that. <laughs> he was recording that from a jail cell. <laughs> when I read that, I was like, what? I thought it was fake. Like, no, it can't be real. It can't be real. It was. He was in prison serving a life sentence. Now, this man was opening a major company under a different identity. Now, let me tell you something about. Let me tell you something about Tom Motsip. Motsipi. So, Tom. Who is Tom? This guy who just came out of nowhere to open up the, the chairsman, the chairs person for 21st Century Medium. Some of his claims were he was a relative of businesswoman Patrice Motsep, which we kind of discussed. He was in New York, which is the reason why he was on the video call. Yeah, because he, he wasn't there. He supposedly owned 33.5% of Viacom. Y'all know who Viacom is. He went on to occupy UBS Financial Services in Switzerland. He started the world's largest promotion company when he was 21. Specializes in mining. He has a bachelor's in business administration and management from the University of Cape Town. Oh, this is one of my favorites. He has a bachelor's of investment in, <laughs> in securities from Harvard. But yeah, those were just some. I didn't even write all the stuff down. Those were just some of the claims. Was that not Google? They didn't Google who owned 33% of Viacom. As you saw in the video, he was video chatting him. He had a nice suit on. And honestly, I would have went. I would have went to the party. I mean, no, you can't really tell who would have thought that he was literally sitting in a jail cell. And And what was the purpose of it? What was the purpose of it? I don't know. I don't know. Because even with his company, all the logos 
that he had were like logos of other companies. One of the, a lot of the companies that were listed under Davos control were companies that actually existed, like United Talent Agency, which is a real United World company, UBS Group, which is a real company, Black Phoenix Digital, which is a real company, and then he has some other stuff that he made up, like Sky Digital. The Sky Digital logo, <laughs> the Sky Digital logo and the 21st Century Media logo are almost identical to the companies that they mimic. So for Sky Digital, there's a, a UK broadcasting network company called uh, Sky News. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you right here. Identical, different colors, same concept, different colors. And 21st Century Media, you see how 21st Century Fox, you see that, you see that? They didn't even try to hide this stuff. No one. Anyway, that same year in 2018, 21st Century Media, they were having this empowerment thing for women. It's called Women in Media, a conference that was there to build leadership and women empowerment in Africa. We love that. He had a couple of, of celebrities that were on the list. Guess who the celebrities were? You know, when they said celebrities and A-listers, I'm thinking maybe it was some African A-listers that maybe we may not be aware of in America. No, it was Halle Berry. <laughs> Halle Berry and Taraji P. Henson. He said they were going to be there. Now, when they did show up, that was when the company, that was kind of the beginning of the end. Which, if I didn't tell you, people that were working at this company, they had to quit their jobs to work here. There was a woman that she quit her job to work for a scam company. They had a spokesperson who was going to be there who's uh Bonang Motheba Motheba, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Sorry if I said it wrong. But when Halle Berry and Taraji backed out, they was like, I don't think we're going to do that either. You know what? Had he used his powers for good instead of evil, he actually would could have I mean, I can't even say would have been successful because he was successful. He was doing all this in jail. And no one, no one looked into, I mean, you have celebrities there. One of the employees said that there was no, there was not like a plan for anything. They were just kind of like showing up for work. And whenever they needed money, money would just show up. They didn't know where it was coming from or how he was getting it. And actually throughout my research, I still don't know where it was coming from or how he was getting it. So on May the 3rd, 2022, at the prison that Thabo Bester was in, in cell 35, a fire broke out. When they finally got the fire to go out, they found the body of Thabo Bester. He was burned pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Like he, his face was unrecognizable. They initially thought that it could have been um, maybe suicide, but when they kind of did more of an autopsy, they saw that it was kind of like um, blunt force trauma on the head and face. So they were thinking maybe he was beaten. But that was kind of that on that. You know, the media outlets were like, he's dead. He burned alive. But the Facebook rapist slash media person, he is gone. And that was kind of the end of that. But was it though? Was it though? The answer is no. Because when they did the DNA test on the corpse, it wasn't even Thabo. I want y'all to understand what that means. There was a body inside of Thabo's cell that was burned alive and beaten up. And it, it wasn't even Thabo. He was thought to be dead. My initial thought was like, what about, you know, did they not notice that somebody was missing from the prison? No, all the inmates were there. So that means they snuck a dead body or they killed somebody there. Well, actually, when they were doing their autopsy, they realized that it was the pancreas and the spleen that was already in an advanced state of, or the beginning state, excuse me, of decomposition. So he didn't die in the fire. Whoever this person was, was dead when they put him in the cell and set it on fire. Why did they test him to see... If it was him, why did they test him? Yeah, because they 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 saw they found pictures of Thabo. Two months after he was supposedly burned alive, he was seen just shopping 
at a grocery store, buying cucumbers and stuff. To this day, he is on the loose. They have not found him. Also, on top of that, his girlfriend, her name is Dr. Nandifa Magudumana. I think that's what it is. She's uh, like a celebrity doctor in South Africa. When the news broke out that he was out of prison, she took them kids and dipped. They suspected that she went to be with Baba. And you know, so I, when I heard about this, I was like, hmm, let me go and look and see. Because she was his customary wife, which I don't think that's like an, a, a legal wife. But it's kind of like if you've been together for so long, you're kind of together. I believe that's what it is. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I went to look. I was like, hmm, let me check her Instagram. And y'all, she's still posting stuff on Instagram like five days ago. I just checked. So like, I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, I, her whole involvement in the thing really just kind of threw everything off. So, as of today, what we know, Bobo had a started a Facebook page. He uh, raped and robbed uh, aspiring models. He killed his girlfriend. He had life in prison. Started a conglomerate type media company which ran for not too long but he was able to fool people so he's on the loose they have not found him the dna has confirmed that it was not uh thabo in the cell and to top it off i have a little extra treat for you his name is not even thabo bester apparently the real thabo bester thabo bester he was a convicted murderer um, who had served his time in um, prison. And he said while when he was convicted, that's when his identity was stolen. And when he got out, people were continuously to come to him to ask him about crimes and murders and things of that nature when he had no idea what they were talking about. So who is Thabo Bester's real name? What is his real name? I don't know. Yo, he went to prison with someone else's name. He... Oh my God, there was so much more to this story, you guys, but it, it really would take me 10 years to go through it. And once again, I want to keep these short and simple and to the point because I don't want to be out here all day editing. What are y'all's thoughts? What do you think? Do, what do you think he is? Do you think he's still in, he's in Johannesburg or he's still in South Africa somewhere? I don't know. I don't know this whole story. Do you think uh, Nandifi, Nandifi, what's his wife's name? That, uh... The, the surgeon, do you think that she's still in contact with him? I don't think so. I don't know. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for coming to my first video that is being uploaded. I appreciate your patience with me during this time. Um, I may do a short snippet of this on TikTok, so keep your eyes open for that. And otherwise, keep the suggestions coming through and grow with me. Okay, have a great day. Bye.